Good Tuesday morning, Mount Olive Church family and friends. Everybody joining us online for another week of devotions. Let's sing a song this morning. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. And I'm not going to sing any more of it. You remember that old song? Uh, that song came to my mind this Sunday uh, in the pastor's message. And I wasn't able to be there. I was preaching at another church, so I had to watch it online. But um a quick shout out to all of our singers and praise group and sound people and everybody that worked so hard on that. Um, Sunday was an amazing service. Look like, uh, watched it online when I came home and, uh, so proud of all those people and thankful for them. a big part of that was probably because me and the pastor hung around this past Wednesday night during, um, practice. And we really guided them a lot on what they were doing. So, uh, you can probably, <clears throat> Just give us some credit there. Uh, just jokes, just jokes. Um, okay, so let's get started. I've done wasted a minute here. Um, focused faith, uh, having a faith that is focused on Sunday's message. Let me get my screen up here. And I really uh, want to hit point number one. You see, I've got on my screen here, look what God has done. Uh, so the scripture, Habakkuk chapter three, verse two says, O Lord, I've heard thy speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known in wrath, remember mercy. And pastor brought that point out and he talked about remembering God. And he talked about work and performance. Um, he talked about remembering what God has done in the past and, and being reminded of what he's done. Um, I bounced around a couple different thoughts to share with you on this. And, uh, one of my thought was with David and, and when he went to fight Goliath and I wanted to talk about how one time he remembered that the, that the Lord had brought him out of the, the paw of the lion and the bear. But there was another one that came to my mind and I want, I didn't put all these scriptures on, but I want to share some scriptures with you and real quick here in Joshua chapter three and four. And as the children of Israel were traveling through, this is after Rahab and the spies and the children of Israel, they're going through and they're about to cross the river Jordan. Uh, it was flooded. They were at a place that they had never crossed before. They couldn't get through. But God told them, uh, he gave He gave Joshua some instructions in, in chapter three. And I'm not going to go all the way over there and, and read that. But in chapter three, verse five, go read Joshua three and four today. It'll give you something to look at. But in, in verse chapter three, verse five, it says, Joshua said to the people, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow. The Lord will do wonders among you. That is something to think about. Just hold on to that thought that tomorrow God is going to do wonders among you. So he give them specific instructions and we don't have a whole lot of time to go through this, but he give them instructions on how he wanted to cross the river, what they needed to carry, how they were going to do that, that the, the priest would put their feet in the water. And as they did, the waters dried up. It says they stood up, the waters which came down, this is verse 16 of chapter three, stood up and rose up on a heap very far from the city of Adam. Uh, and it says the priest that bare the Ark of the Covenant stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan. They crossed on dry ground. So here's the thing to remember. Um, when they crossed that river, Joshua also gave them instructions on picking up some stones. Uh, he said, take 12 men out of the people out of every tribe and command you saying, take ye hence out of the midst of the Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm, 12 stones. So every one of them are going to carry a stone. You shall carry them over with you and leave them in the lodging place where you shall lodge this night. And so he told them to everyone grab a stone of the priest. All of you grab a stone where the priest stood and the water was dried up, grab a stone and take them with you. And I'm sure these people begin to think, why are we carrying a stone out of here? Remember, this is a place that was impassable. They had come to a point in their life in a situation that was impassable. The waters were too deep. They couldn't cross. They couldn't go any further. They were at a standstill and God dried the river up the same way he does a lot of times in our lives. So look what happens in chapter four. He says, this is what you do. Take those, pass the ark over before the, before the Lord in the midst of the Jordan. Take ye up every man a stone upon his shoulder, according to the number of tribes, which was 12. Verse six says, 
that this may be a sign among you that when your children ask their fathers in time to come saying, what mean you these stones? You shall answer them. This is verse seven of chapter four, that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it passed over Jordan, the waters of Jordan were cut off and these stones shall be for a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. Place those stones to where when people ask you, when your children come and ask and your grandchildren ask later on, why are those stones there? It's a memorial to be able to tell them what God has done. We need to take those stones in our lives. Sometimes when God brings us to a river and he dries it up and allows us to cross, we need to take those stones and we need to stack them up as a memorial to remember God has came through time and time again. I want to end on this quote here that Pastor you Sunday. I wrote it down as I was watching the service. I really loved it. Be reminded of God's work in the, in the past to focus on going forward. Remember what God's done in your life. I hope all of you have a blessed week. We love you. God bless. Pray for us and we'll pray for you. And I want to end by saying this. Um, Brother Don went on to be with the Lord, Don Gillette of uh, Because We Care Ministries. He's the one that really got us involved in the mission trips to Nicaragua. Uh, remember his family, remember his wife, Pam. And uh, yep, we love him. He's in, a, he's in a good place rejoicing with the Lord, but our hearts are broke too. We love you guys.